everyone, my name is Kitu Metumiwa. I'm a student at the University of the Free State, currently studying bachelor's in administration. And today I'm here with two of my book club members and I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, hi everybody. My name is Cindy Sosahoma and I'm also studying in the University of the Free State. I'm doing BCom Accounting and I would like Nompilo to introduce herself. Hi guys, my name is Nompilo Kumete. I'm a student at the University of Free State studying Bachelor of Social Sciences. Today we'll be reviewing Frankenstein by Mary Shelley in Lani de Mandela Month. So moving on to the first question, I want us to actually discuss the central themes of the book. So Cindy, what are the central themes of the book and how do they contribute to the, to the overall narrative? Uh, okay, um, the central theme that pops up a lot is isolation because every time Frankenstein wants to perform at his best, he isolates from everybody mm -hmm. and everything. Also, it occurs when the monster realizes that Frankenstein doesn't want him. He also goes into isolation by running away from Frankenstein. So it contributes to the whole idea and the fact that it shows that every time, even if as humans, we just need to isolate from people to actually think about things. That's why at the end of the day, when... Frankenstein ended up committing suicide. He thought it through, like, mm -hmm. the whole idea. And also when the monster also came through and also wanted to die because it realized that Frankenstein, with him being dead, he actually can't do anything because, like, his whole focus was around Frankenstein. And then we also have another one, which is family, because Frankenstein, Frankenstein grew up in a very warm home. So, therefore when he grew up, when after his mother told him that he should marry Elizabeth, it was not, like, it did not come as a shock. It mm -hmm. was something that he knew at the end of the day. He also wanted to settle to be like his mom, mom and dad. So at the end of the day, the monster realized that and then it used that against him. So, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's go on deeper to discuss the characterization of Victor. How does his ambition and pursuit of knowledge shape the events of the story. Um, the theme I picked from this novel is the theme of humanity, of how humanity, how the lack of humanity can distract the society. Mm -hmm. To add on the theme of isolation, I do feel like um, the creature was isolated by his creator and the society did not accept him. With that, it was the lack of humanity because at some point in the novel, we see the creature helping the girl in the woods. But instead, for his benevolence, he gains or he is rewarded with a short wound. So I would say the lack of humanity can distract the society. As we see that after that event, the creature starts to distract the community, the society, because of their revenge. Yeah, Frankenstein, the, the, the main character of the book, he's a really smart person. I mean, he's a young scientist. So I would like uh, you, Cindy, to actually tell us how his ambitions and his pursuit of knowledge actually shapes the events of the story. Okay. Like you said, yes. that Frankenstein is a genius. Mm -hmm. ha, we all wish that we could be Frankenstein. <laughs> yes. He firstly uses the fact that he had like, he was a famous scientist to gain access into mocks so that he could get his body parts to actually build this monster. This shows that Frankenstein is one person who is very determined. When he wants something, he doesn't look at the precautions or the after effects. He just goes for it. And then we also realize that as much as like he is a very determined person, but mm -hmm. he's also human, that he, he is also capable of feeling frightened. This occurs when he realized what he has done when the monster actually comes to life and then he runs away from it. Had he not ran away from it due to being frightened to it, he would actually taught it how to actually like maneuver and get to understand how the human world works and teaches like the human kind ways. And we could have not at the end of the day seen the monster get um, very, very angry and wanting to have revenge on him. So, yeah, I think that's how it actually shapes it. Yeah, and like the two of you mentioned uh, previous, uh, you answering the previous questions, uh, we talked about isolation, right? But I want us to go deeper into it. Let's let's explore the this theme of isolation and let's um, discuss how it actually affects various characters 
including Frankenstein and the monster. Okay. Yeah. So, um, with Frankenstein, I feel like the isolation didn't affect him as much, but it did affect his family mm -hmm. because they kept on writing for him and his friend Henry tried to read out to him. As for the creature, the isolation played a huge part of him because he was isolated in the woods. He lived in hiding while he wanted to go out there to seek love and affection from the world. But because of his deformed physique, mm -hmm. he couldn't achieve that. And that isolation again led to him gaining the destructive personality because he wanted to be human. But at the end of the day, he was not fully human or he wasn't a, fu a, a normal human that the society could accept. And uh, Cindy, how do you think like this uh, actually isolation, since we're we focusing on the theme of the month, which is Mandela Month, how do you think isolation uh, shaped the overall character of Tata when he was in prison? Okay, like I said, when it comes to Frankenstein, every time he wanted to, mm -hmm. to be at his best and with his thoughts, he isolated. So I think for Utata, it was at advantage because at the end of the day, he was left in prison and then he had so many minutes and times to actually think of what he wanted to become when he actually is released from prison. That's why when he becomes released, he goes on and to live his world, his life, he does all the things that he was incapable of actually doing while he was in prison because of isolation. He knew that he, he missed his family. That's why he spent most of his time with his family. Hence, even when he wanted to be voted again, when people mm -hmm. wanted to vote him back into power, it was like, nah, I'm done. My rule is over because he knew at that time all he wanted to do was to actually be with his family. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Um, let's, let's explore more on the moral and uh, ethical you know, implications. How does the writer actually, how does the writer, uh, Shelley, uh, explore the consequences of playing with God? I mean, Frankenstein tried to bring life by using uh, uh, human human bodies that, that uh, actually died, like people who actually died. He took their bo body pieces oh. and tried to create uh, a life in it. So how do you... Um, firstly, I would say it's unethical for, it was unethical for Victor to steal the decayed bodies. That is a serious offense mm -hmm. in terms of laws. And also morally, it's very immoral for him to, to, to take the body parts of the people who are supposed to be resting in peace and try to bring that to life because in, in the journey of life, we are born, we live and we die. So we are, the, there was no need for him to reincarnate the, the dead bodies because now he created a monster, a monster that he couldn't control because at, at the end of the day, he was not God. He was playing God, but the monster ended up becoming his master. So let's, let's explore the relationship between Vector and the monster. How does their dynamic uh, relationship involve throughout the novel? Okay. Firstly, we realized that by the time when um, Victor was actually creating the monster, mm -hmm. he was excited. So he loved his creation. He wanted to see what was about to become of his creation. But then the moment the creation actually comes alive, he's now afraid of mm -hmm. it. And then he starts hating it. The same applies with the monster. The moment it opens its eyes and it sees Victor, it sees its, its, its master and it's excited and loves him. But the problem now becomes when he realizes that his master does not share the very same sentiments and values with it and then it runs away. So we realize that over time, it, their relationship both started with them loving each other, but at some point, because of different factors, they end up actually hating each other and then they become, they become a, like a superhero and a villain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the relationship between them was a creator and his creation only because as soon as the fiend came to life, um, Frankenstein fled. And the fiend wanted to follow him, wanted love, as we said earlier on. Mm -hmm. But Frankenstein was scared of the monster. And after the monster started destructing um, the community, the society, when he started killing his brother, 
and then it didn't now it progressed to being an enemy mm -hmm. at first he was scared of it but now it became his enemy as we see towards the end of the novel he was seeking him and wanting to end him mm -hmm. so um, looking at the monster, like you said, that the monster really wanted to be loved. So is it actually good for you to create something and then run away from it? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Yeah. This guy decided to be God, but now he can't control his creation. Mm -hmm. Why are you scared of your creation? If you created something that you are scared of, how do you expect the society to accept that creation? Because if you create something, he was... He was supposed to be the one helping the monster adjust in the community or in the society, but it was the opposite. Yeah, yeah. So, to add to that, mm -hmm. it's like when, when you create a child, obviously it's your child. You have mm. to actually take care of your it. responsibility. So you can't create a child and then run away from it. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, coming, and coming to the society, how does the society norms and their expectation like really shape the character of the monster? Ah, uh, okay. Um, as much as I feel for the monster, but I feel like I don't blame the society for how they reacted because we are seated here. If something of that creation comes along, I'm sure we would, we would run for our lives mm -hmm. because um, he's described as having a yellow skin and abnormal eyes. Mm -hmm. So he was ugly and the community felt like they were in danger, they were in peril. So there's nothing they could have done. Yes, they were wrong for not giving it a chance, but who would give a monster a chance? Yeah, but but coming to that, um, I mean, like, for instance, uh, the, 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 the victor is the one who created the monster. Yes. And obviously when you're creating something, you're actually seeing the progress on how it's going to look like. So it, it actually surprised me that he, in fact, was scared of what he created because when you like building something, obviously you can see what you're building. Exactly. Right? And so him building something that he's going to be scared of at the end is just, yeah. So moving on to our next question, uh, let's analyze, right? Let's mm. analyze the use of framing devices mm. and multiple nar narratives in the book. So with that, I feel like the author did an exceptional work in writing in that style because the, the book is written in the first person's point of view, which means we can we, we get a chance to be the characters, mm. feel their emotions, to be them, to be in their shoes. Um, I remember when I read the tale of the monster, I felt how sad he was. I felt it because it seems like when I was reading, it was like I, I, and like when it is in the dead person point of view where it's like a she or he, it's like it's it's too objective. So for us to feel and to be attached to be the, to the characters is through the first person's point of view. So. Um, I, I like that so much in the novel. Yeah, and also the use of graphics, the way how they they actually go into details with the graphics. It's like you're there, you're in the middle of the mm. story, you get to understand how everything is affected with each other. Mm. So, yeah. And also the use of imagery to describe the emotions of Victor. Yeah. So the writing style was exceptional. Yes. Oh, and also to add on the writer's writing style, it was very challenging for me at first because it's a classical literature and the writing style is not the same as the modern one. However, the challenge was good for me and I liked it. You liked it. Mm. Uh, you know, and for me, it was my first time reading a horror story and I couldn't read the book at night, actually. I, I, I preferred reading it during the day or in the morning because it was really frightening. And to actually go through how the monster was feeling when the monster wanted to share um, his story to his creator, it was really fascinating. So now I want us to reflect on the novel as a whole. Let's try to get what the, um, what the writer, the message the writer was actually trying to give us. What do you think that message is? Okay. I think the most important one was that for every action, there's a consequence. Okay. So whatever that you're trying to do in life, however mm -hmm. you plan it, always think that, okay, 
what are the consequences to this and the consequences would I be able to actually withstand them and if not just run away from it and leave it mm. Mm. Um, in terms of literature I don't think I can be able to speculate the author's intent however the message that I as a reader got from the novel is again humanity humanity and to add on what, on what Cindy said um, every action has a consequence and you should be able to be accountable mm. for what you have done because mm -hmm. uh, the message that I really received while I was reading the book is we shouldn't actually judge uh, the book by its cover yes. I mean what if, like from the start the monster was a really good mm. good creation yeah right like he had feelings mm. he began to learn things and if only uh, people could actually hear him out and give him a chance not looking at his uh, physical appearance I think the events that followed after him the monster meeting up with the with the with the with the society and also victor it wouldn't have led to victor uh, his brother getting murdered and him you know committing suicide true even after the death of victor mm -hmm. the monster did feel some sort of animals mm -hmm. because he regretted what yeah. he had done which means even after the society treated him badly but mm -hmm. he still had he still that yes that's true. So, Cindy, what are your last thoughts on the book? Like, would you really recommend it to someone else to read? Because for now, I think I'm going to stay away from horror <laughs> stories. Yeah, so what, what do you, what, will you, will you uh, refer the book to someone else? Yeah, I would actually, I would actually do. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, firstly, it enlightens your imagination. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you that sense of creation that a person can actually write something that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. And then that can actually take you from your couch to actually inside the book. And yeah. you feel like you're part of the book whatsoever. And also the mere fact that it teaches us that as people, at the end of the day, we become what we are constantly exposed to because had the monster not actually being exposed to being bad, mm. he would have not known bad. So at the end of the day, it teaches us things like that. So I would actually, actually do recommend it to people. Mm, what about you? Yeah. I would too. As I said, um, I was unfamiliar with the writing style, but I was able to think out of the box and think critically. And yeah, also... As a literature student, it challenged me to look at all the perspectives of the literary devices, the everything that has to do with literature, and I would recommend it to someone else. And I think it was very critical of us to take that horror book and also be able to relate it with the Mandela theme because mm -hmm. we can see that it's two different things, but we're able to find some sort of connection and correlate it. And that's it from us, the book club members. Remember that we're having these reviews each and every month and this was our second review. So we hope to see you guys next month. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>